Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Sorry, we started just a couple minutes late. We wanted to make sure we had everything ready to go for you. And um, happy Friday. Here we are um, on our Facebook Live. And today, there's a, there's a few things that we're going to talk about today. But we're going to talk a little bit more about um, the immune system and a little bit more about what's going on with COVID-19. And I am so thrilled that in studio today, six feet apart, of course, we have um, Dr. Robert Karolovich. Dr. Karolovich is a primary care concierge physician here in Naples. He is my good friend. He is incredibly smart. He's been ahead of the curve on a lot of integrative medicine things ever since I've known him. And, um, and he's going to weigh in with some of his experience with what his patients have been asking and sharing and um, how can we do our best to keep our immune system keeping us healthy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We've, we've talked about the immune, immune boost package and we, have a, we can dig in a little bit deeper on some of the reason, some of the ingredients that are in the supplements package with that and the reason that you want to be able to take those kinds of things, especially now. Um, so welcome, Dr. Krolovich. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell me, what, what has been some of the most common questions that you've had from your patients in these last six weeks, I suppose, whether it's about COVID or the immune system. Um, we'll talk about the quarantine, um, you know, going out of our, going on, <laughs> getting so frustrated with being in the same four walls all the time. But what are the kinds of questions that your patients have been asking you um, in general in these last six weeks? Well, uh, several weeks ago, it started off with, do I have it? Because a lot of people were still outdoors. There was a lot more going on in town. People weren't quote quarantined. So uh, a lot of people were sick. Uh, they may have had just regular viral illnesses. They may have, some of the allergies may have started coming about. And so people in general were, were calling up to find out if they should be checked for uh, uh, the COVID virus, um, the coronavirus. So but, every virus looks like coronavirus right correct. now. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. The, the good thing is that uh, most people have followed what they were supposed to do and we're seeing, not seeing much illness right now. But the biggest question I get asked now is what can I do to prevent it? Uh, you know, you hear a lot of things on television about all the potential treatments. They're obviously working on a vaccine, uh, but that'll be a while. So it's what can I do to keep myself from uh, acquiring a bad viral um, infection if yeah. I catch it. So it's really all about the immune system. People ask me if they're at risk, especially patients who are over 60. You know, does my, uh, do my health conditions make me more predisposed? And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's all about boosting the immune system. It gives me a chance to start talking to them about their lifestyle and the things that they can do. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, lifestyle. I mean, uh, besides the hand washing and the social distancing, we're talking about um, what you're using food as medicine, getting, you know, restorative sleep, making sure your immune system is in top order. Um, and you have some unique knowledge and training in um this nutrigenomic testing where um, to make that a little bit more um, not so doctor speak, that a lot of us have little changes in our genes that maybe we can't make a certain enzyme or we're not able to process a certain vitamin the way that somebody else could and how important especially the B vitamins are to our immune system. So can you, can you share a little bit about that? Sure. As I've told you, uh, and we've had this conversation before, you know, where medicine is actually heading uh, is in a complete or, uh, different direction than what we're used to getting trained in traditional medicine. Um, I think genetics are going to play a very important part. We're finding that people are uh, made up genetically different. Uh, and uh, say, for instance, genetically, you may be more prone to developing uh, a disease. It's not just the ones that we, we typically hear about. Uh, you know, genetically, we make certain proteins or enzymes that help our biological processes occur. So if we're deficient, we may actually uh, be more prone to developing diseases as, as, we, as we get older or as we're stressed, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. I think uh, knowing people's genetics will allow us to 
treat people individually. And that's where nutrigenomics comes in. So instead of taking, you know, just a plethora of vitamins and having expensive urine, yeah. uh, we can specifically cater uh, certain nutrients to people's needs. That's that it really is, you know, pretty revolutionary if you think about um, how many we just what are we taking? How much are we taking? Are we taking the right things? And to really be able to precision that down. Um, so you you know that I had um, talked about the daily two. I'm going to push this up here and the importance of that these are already somewhat processed B vitamins so that it's more bioavailable for everybody taking it. And how, in your experience, how important is that in keeping the immune system well? Oh, it's incredibly important. They're the ones I actually take. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably like a lot of people. Doc, I'm taking too many uh, supplements as it is. So uh, you really want to take something that is good quality and actually has the, the right dosage or the right amount in it. Because uh, most people are taking over-the-counter multivitamins and they'll say, is this appropriate? And I'll say, well, if you take about four to six or eight or ten of them, because the quantities are very, very small and they're not, not the more readily absorbed. Uh, so it's nice to find uh, a multivitamin that um, has all the right dosages, has the right quality and the right quantity of uh, micronutrients in it. Absolutely. I, yeah, I mean, I think that that's really, really important. And that's in a multi. And having the mineral content, um, those minerals make all the difference in the world on whether the vitamin is absorbed and whether the body can utilize the vitamin. Um, you and I have talked about the importance in minerals, actually, when the body is trying to utilize nutrients, how important mineral content is. And to be able to have it all in one supplement is really nice because I don't like swallowing pills any more than anybody else does. Um, so getting as many good things into a small quantity as we can, I think is really, really beneficial. Oh, it's true. Um, it's, it's interesting. I had that conversation with a patient uh, several weeks ago who did a micronutrient test. and um, tell, it, tell a little bit more about that micronutrient test. Uh, there's, there's certain companies around the country that, that will do a very good micronutrient test, but, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to actually mention the one I use. Well, the, 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 the technology is, is looking at the nutrients actually inside the right, cell, it's inside the cell rather yes. than just floating around in the serum. Correct. Yeah. And, uh, it was interesting because his antioxidant level had dropped compared to the previous. And really when you went through a lot of the, oh. uh, minerals and, and, uh, nutrients that uh, were also deficient also uh, some of his uh, oleic acid or basically omegas uh, you know they all interact and they're all needed so you can actually be deficient in certain minerals and vitamins and actually affect your antioxidant level which is really what we need to boost up to get our immune system uh, active for sure so had he changed brands or had he stopped taking some of his vitamins did you figure yeah, we switched them over to uh, a better multivitamin. To the medical grade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, we want, all, we want everybody to get all the bang they can out of the buck that they're spending for their nutrients and their, their vitamins and supplements. So um, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about vitamin C. This is the vitamin C. You can get medical grade vitamin C from multiple different companies. I like this company because I know the testing that they do. Um, this is from Douglas Laboratories. Um, Pure Encapsulations is also a sister company with this company, but it's vitamin C. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about vitamin C and, and the importance of it in general in the immune system, but also what is your um, take on the doses and, and specifically vitamin C with, with COVID-19? Oh, it's such an important vitamin. Um, everything I read as far as dosing you should get uh, large amounts, larger than typically our gut would tolerate. Uh, I think uh, if, you're, if you're asking dose, I would probably use 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams uh, daily just for a preventative, from a preventative standpoint. But if I felt I was catching uh, some type of viral or respiratory infection, I would definitely boost my uh, dose up. But the, uh, it, they can sometime, it can sometimes be a little um, tough on the tummy. Exactly. That's, that's the big drawback. Yeah. And so in that case, I'll just tell people to um, 
spread it apart, take several doses throughout the day. Uh, but I think the best way to get vitamin C, if you're, if you really want good prevention or during such a, something like a pandemic as we have, IV uh, vitamin C is very important too. So you can have, you know, it's a great antioxidant. It helps increase our uh, T lymphocytes. It helps with maturation. It helps uh, activate our immune system. So it's just one of those vitamins that's uh, extremely important. It helps uh, increase the nitric oxide production, which helps us increase our blood flow so we can carry more oxygen. All these things that basically the virus is trying to uh, deplete. Yes. Exactly. Um, our vitamin C um, boost, the IV that we're offering in the boost package has 8,000 milligrams of vitamin C in it, um, in a liter of hydrating saline. And um, as you know, you and I have talked about this before, I think that most of us are walking around dehydrated. I don't think our tissues hydrate well, even when we drink a lot of fluid. We can drink a lot of fluid, and that's good for, it's good for us. But if you're Drinking the fluid and then it's, you know, you're, you're just, it's going right through the kidneys and not on into the tissues. Hydrating tissues is, a, is, a, is another process. So um, the ability to be able to hydrate the body because of the, the, the acid-base relationship and everything else, really hydrate the body with a nice liter of saline. Um, people walk out and they just feel so much better. Their joints don't hurt as much. Their skin feels better. I mean, it's just amazing what hydration alone can do. <laughs> Oh, hydration is very important. I, uh, I, I measure uh, body composition in the office, and I, I always stress um, the amount of intracellular and extracellular fluid in, in the weight. And it, I usually show people that it's more than 60% of their weight is usually related to uh, fluid in the body. So uh, it just makes them realize how important it is to actually hydrate. Exactly. Um, okay, so give me your 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 thoughts on zinc, um, especially in the light of COVID nineteen. Um, what is your experience with the zinc? What are your thoughts about what the research has shown us with zinc in this in this particular virus? Oh, zinc is great if you can get it. I'm sure you have, <laughs> you you have plenty of it. You you were smart. Uh, but <laughs> it was really hard to get, and that's why you know I I I, yeah. I made sure people knew. I wasn't, I wasn't pulling stuff I already had off the shelf, and I, I literally had to go and call in some favors and use whatever resources I had to get, to get the zinc because I felt like it was so important to be part of this package. Zinc is one of those things that we know will actually uh, inhibit the replication of a virus. Uh, it's been shown, uh, studies are positive. It basically stops it from rep replicating itself. The problem with zinc is that it has um, a positive charge. So it can't always get uh, through the cell, through the cell layers, the outside protective layers of the cell. And so there are other things that are used to carry it across or bridge it across so uh, zinc can actually get to where the action is to stop the virus from replicating. But zinc is absolutely important. Yeah. Um, so like a carrier, it needs to be able to... Because positive and positive repel each other is basically. Yes, yeah. and that's where things like quercetin, uh, turmeric, curcumin uh, come in, uh, EGCG, you know, from green tea. Mm -hmm. uh, those are actually uh, carriers. Nice. Good. All of those things are really good for you, too. <laughs> yes. So tell me, do you have any patient experiences with silver, with colloidal silver? Um, I, I have multiple patient, just incredible turnaround stories with patients, but I want to hear some of your patient stories of, of what, what was going on with them before they started on silver and then what happened after they started on silver. Um, silver is great if you get a good product. I mean, it has to be, the particles have to be small enough basically that they, they do the work because there's a lot, I can believe a lot of junk out there. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what gives it a bad name, but, um, uh, you know, it has, any fungal properties, any viral properties, any bacterial properties. I mean, it really, really works. And um, it's kind of, if you think about it uh, as you would zinc, it basically, um, you know, attacks the things that are attacking you as a host. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very protective, and uh, people start feeling better. They, uh, they start uh, detoxifying. They start just feeling much better after uh, several weeks, uh, 
you know, chronic fungal infections, uh, just infections that they've had for quite some time that just haven't gone away with your standard treatments. Mm-hmm. It's it's a very good product. Yeah, I think it's an amazing product. I've had, um, uh, I like the nasal spray. Now, I will tell you, the nasal spray, when you have tender little mucous membranes like mine, um, it can sting. So it, some people just don't tolerate it. You can dilute it to make it a little bit less, you know, um, sharp, <laughs> or you can use the, this spray for the back of your throat. Uh, you know, you don't have to put it in your nose, but, um, being able to do a sinus rinse with like a neti pot, um, a little bit of silver uh, with, you know, uh, water and rinse your sinuses on a regular basis. Probably my favorite patient stories are the patients who had chronic GI problems, whether they have constipation or they have loose stool or diarrhea, um, you know, diarrhea can come for, from a lot of reasons, but it's not a normal condition. There's, that's not normal for our bowels to not be pretty regular. And um, people that have had problems for years just 100% turned around with silver because it doesn't kill the good bacteria that we're supposed to have in our body. It's such a compatible um, supplement or biologic for us, and um, especially in, you know, obviously you don't want to use too much, but the... Argentin is the um, 23 is 23 parts per million. The difference then with Sovereign Silver, which is the over count, over the counter from the same company, is it's 10 parts per million. So it's a potency, it's a potency difference. So, um, so I also want to ask you a little bit about um, what are your patients sharing with you about quarantine and kind of bouncing off the walls? And do you do you have some things that you're Kind of encouraging them to do in this time when we're all completely out of our normal routine. Uh, definitely get good sleep. Don't watch all the news all night because uh, it's causing a lot of stress, and stress obviously is interfering with sleep. And sleep is very important for your immune system. Uh, hydrate a lot. Uh, try to keep it more hydration with water than uh, than the alcohol, which I, I guess be. <laughs> People tend to do a little bit more when they're, <laughs> they're cooped up. Uh, and really try to work on, on diet. You know, it's, it's hard because things aren't available. People are out of their routine. So I find people are probably uh, not eating as healthy as they, they're used to. Uh, so I tell them to try to do some uh, time-restricted fasting, maybe skipping breakfast. That way uh, you can uh, inhibit, you know, mTOR, which is another thing that the virus uses to kind of replicate itself so it's just a, a what's a mTOR pathway. tell give us a, a, a layman's term description of mTOR it's just one of those pathways that uh it, it's constantly turned on it's it's making our cells continually reproduce and uh kind of uh, uh manufacture themselves or, or or uh keep replicating basically it's like uh riding a, a bicycle and you're constantly riding the bicycle and you're not taking a break you need to take a break to get your energy back up. Uh, and it, mTOR is constantly stimulated by food. Uh, and uh, if we're eating all day long, we are, con- are basically uh, turning on our mTOR system all the, all the time. And so remember, when cells replicate or, or fix themselves, there's always the trash. Yeah. And you have to take out the trash every once in a while. So you need to take a break so your body can, can detox and uh, repair itself properly. And by blocking mTOR with fasting, which is usually what you do, you're, you're giving your body time to uh, take a break, to fix itself, and get rid of the garbage. Awesome. That's a really good explanation. Um, you know, I heard you do a, a, a talk one time, and it was incredible. And you talked about, as I think that a lot of people don't understand this, when it talks, we talk about restorative sleep, and the cortisol pathway and how that's kind of connected to each other. Can you share a little bit like, about that? Why is sleep and what's cortisol and how is that all kind of interconnected with insulin resistance and some of the things that lots and lots of folks are facing right now? Yeah, cor- cortisol is, uh, is one of our hormones, uh, just like insulin is. Um, it's great if you think about you know why doctors give people uh, prednisone or anti-inflammatories basically for short-term use, and it's it's great. It gets stimulated by anything that um, the body needs to raise blood sugar. So if um, when you're uh, 
your cortisol is actually highest early in the morning. Why? Because you have to produce uh, blood sugar to get your brain to wake up. You have to produce epinephrine or epinephrine to wake, get you out of bed. Uh, and that's part of what cortisol does. Um, so getting out of bed is stressful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why most heart attacks and strokes are early in the morning because uh, your uh, epinephrine or epinephrine are higher. Um, but um, cortisol is good in short little bursts and, and appropriately, but the problem is the body can't distinguish between different types of stress. So if you have mental stress, if you have environmental stress, if, uh, if you're sick, all these things are raising your cortisol level and like everything else. If it's too high, um, you know, unfortunately, cortisol also stimulates insulin and insulin's job is to store fat. So what's happening is um, you're storing fat. So cortisol will uh, essentially, if it's prolonged, if it's prolonged, uh, it will uh, cause you to gain too much weight. Yes. And, and if you don't sleep, your cortisol level will actually be elevated uh, for another 24 hours. So it's, it's very important to keep your cortisol levels at, at a minimum when needed. So that's huge. So it's only supposed to really pulse out maybe a couple times a day. Correct. On a, on, in a, if the bear is chasing you, it's going to pulse um, because you you need to be able to run and you need energy to your muscles. But in but normally we're not supposed to have a continuous cortisol bleed coming out. We're supposed to just have it pulse big in the morning and then maybe one other time during the day, right? Actually, a couple times during the day. Usually, okay. usually before eating. But um, before but you're eating. right. The biggest pulse is early in the morning. But what happens with stress is we have a big pulse uh, that's hanging around at night. So, you know, most people say, well, I got up, I had to use the restroom, and then I just laid in bed and I started thinking. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's cortisol going to work. So now your brain's awake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to diminish your cortisol levels. Excellent. So... What, what kinds of things are you telling your patients right now um, about other than, you know, you know all the ingredients that I put together in the Immune Boost Package. Let's talk a little bit about the thymus and alpha-1 because you are also a peptide certified physician. We're, there's not very many of us. And um, I think this peptide is absolutely incredible. Uh, what is your experience or your take on thymus and alpha-1? Oh, it's, it's great. Um, the way I explain it to people is, you know, obviously, you, you can include the virus or not, but um, you know we're the we're the host, and we have to basically boost an immune response. And so we start talking about the immune system, and I try to take it, make it simple. And I tell people, well, you know, you make these cells, your bone marrow makes these cells that eventually become lymphocytes. Okay, and we're talking specifically the T lymphocytes, and then they migrate over to the thymus gland, and the thymus gland helps them mature. Okay, but what happens with the thymus gland? It's nice and large and produces a lot of T cells when we're young and probably at its highest amount when we're at puberty. And then after that, it starts shrinking. And so we're not as capable of making our uh, T lymphocytes, which are you know, a huge part of our immune system to help us fight off viruses. And you know, how can we boost that up? How can we, can we give you something or can you take something that basically... Uh, acts like the thymus gland to help these immune cells mature so that they can go fight off viruses. And that's what thymus and alpha basically does. It acts like a, a thymus gland to help produce more T lymphocytes and, uh, you know, help them mature and become the kind of uh, lymphocytes that you want to help you fight off viruses. Awesome. That's, that was so well explained. I, I have seen this peptide in um, my patients and in my south, um, used as a preventative during cold and flu season and at the first onset of symptoms of some kind of a viral infection, using it then and it can really um, change the course. It can stop things in its tracks. It lets your immune system, gives it a huge advantage right when it needs it to make either you don't get symptoms anymore or your, your course is much shorter and less severe. With this peptide that's what i've seen in my patients and in myself what have you seen that too oh yes and you know people will ask well what what what's a peptide i mean i tell them it's just a, 
a group of amino acids put together, but basically it, it allows your cells uh, to signal and correct your immune system, make it do what it's supposed to do. And thymus and alpha-1 has been around since the 1980s. Uh, there are over 3,000 patient studies. It's extremely safe. Um, I have never seen any side effects. Um, you know, it, it, I use it a lot to help correct autoimmune issues. I've seen dramatic uh, improvement there. But um, just to booster your immune system, it's, it, it's a great peptide. Excellent. And what's been your experience? I know, I know you you know about biocidin, and you've seen the presentations, and you've read the research on the biocidin. Um, what's been your experience with biocidin as far as an herbal um, antimicrobial agent? Um, it, it's worked. Uh, I've had it for. Uh, I've used it for chronic MRSA. Wow. Um, yeah, and I've, I've had some some results. I probably haven't used it as much uh, as other people have, but I've heard very positive things from a lot of my colleagues at meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, but it works It works very well, and it has a lot of good uh, data behind it. That's I was so impressed with that, with their, with their company, that they're taking the time and spending the money to do these this research. Um, it's very powerful behind a product, and there's no side effects. I've not seen any side effects with biocidin. I've not read about any side effects with biocidin. Have you? No, no. no. And actually, uh, you know, they have this little product um, that I got from them that uh, you use it if you start getting a s scratchy throat, sore mm -hmm. throat. And, uh, you know, I've used it a couple of times myself over the last uh, couple of years. And I tell you, the, the sore throat's gone within 24 hours. Is that the throat spray? Mm-hmm. That's what's in our immune boost package. Oh. I travel, that, and the reason I put it in there was for that. It's incredible, and to travel, and when, if you're going to travel, or nobody's traveling right now, but someday we will travel again, probably. And um, or if you're going to be out in a big public place, or you're going to be around people that a lot of other people, um, that throat spray is it's pretty awesome, and it doesn't taste bad, right? <laughs> Can no, you confirm no, not that? Because <laughs> I promised everybody, I don't, I, no, I don't like doesn't. anything that tastes bad. <laughs> So I'm going to see, um, Sean is here with us also. I'm going to bring him into the conversation. He's been m managing and looking for, at the questions. And um, how are you doing, Sean? Good Hi, afternoon, Sean. Dr. Heather, Dr. Rob. <laughs> I'm the only non-doctor in the room. It's feeling a little intimidating. But we got some great questions coming in here uh, for both of you uh, revolving around this incredible topic that you're sharing. And, uh, Amber has a question about, uh, the peptide that you were just discussing. And she says, she asks, is it better to take alpha one twice a week or to save it for when you have symptoms in an emergency? Well, let me, let me give my two cents first. And then I want to hear, um, Dr. Karolovich's, uh, the, the thymus and alpha-1 twice a week is part of a preventative protocol. And um, so you can do it twice a week. There, another preventative protocol is one dose intramuscularly. And that will, you know, the, the product that you get from your own immune system from that can hold you over quite a bit. The problem with holding on to a peptide is that they have expiration dates. They don't last for years and years. They don't even last for one year. So it's difficult to purchase it and then hang on to it. Um, personally, I feel like, um, and, and it's by prescription only, so you need to be in, with a physician who can manage peptides for you and prescribe them for you appropriately, but thymus and alpha-1 is one of those that I like to have on hand all the time. Um, and, you know, there's other, as, there's other properties to it, including autoimmune, um, inflammatory conditions that it's really, really beneficial for. Uh, but, but yeah, so you can't really hang on to it very long. Um, you can do it twice a week during a time like this, or you can do one dose intramuscularly, and that'll last you for quite some time. Rob? Yeah, I use it the same way. Um, there are just people that would prefer to do it twice a week, and that's fine prophylactically. Uh, once a day is, is fine, too, it's, it's sub-Q. Uh, but if, they're, if they start having symptoms of, some type of virus, uh, I would definitely uh, increase it, uh, maybe even to uh, twice a day when you're acutely ill. But that's pretty much a standard regimen. Mm -hmm. All right. Outstanding answers. Hey, we've got another question here from Nana. 
And Nana asks, what do you recommend for gloves and a mask when we go grocery shopping? Yes or no? This has been a big thing in the news it, recently. It has. And, and, and it, this, this, will be, this is my recommendation for you. Um, you may have heard me talk about my concern with reusing a product that was meant to be used once and then dispose of. Um, you know, these, and that is concerning to me because you can't clean them. But now everybody has, um, oh, mine is sitting over there in my bag, um, these cotton or cloth masks that you can wash every day. And I do recommend that that's been the recommendation of the CDC is to wear a mask when you're out in public. The gloves, let me, let's talk about the gloves. I know they're hard to come by, but remember that if you're wearing gloves and you touch something and then you touch your skin, you're, you're, you're wearing gloves is not going to protect you if you keep touching your own face or your skin with the gloves on. My recommendation is when you go out in a public place, you wear the gloves, unless you're going to wash the gloves with soap and water, which you can wash the gloves with soap and water, you need to get rid of them. You don't take them from place to place to place to place and then back into your home. Because then you're, whatever you're touching, you're bringing with you. So that's my, my two cents on that. What about you, Dr. Rob? Oh, remember the virus has spread basically by fomites. Fomites are surfaces. So uh, definitely I was just at the grocery store yesterday, wore a mask, and I put on some gloves. Uh, why? Because you're touching things that I'm sure other people have touched. Uh, the mask, um, you know, I mean, realistically, it's to protect you, protect others, but it keeps you from also touching your face if you have a mask on. Uh, gloves also remind you not to touch your face because that's really where we, we get a lot of spread, bringing our hands after we've touched something with the virus on it to our face. And a lot of people tend to do that quite often. Um, so I would definitely, at the grocery store, I would definitely wear a mask and gloves because obviously, even though they're, they're washing down the, uh, the grocery carts, but still, uh, again, you're touching things, you're grabbing things, you're looking at them. Uh, and uh, if you have the experience I had yesterday, some, some guy ran off with my cart, uh, <laughs> had his stuff, and he didn't even realize it. So uh, by the time he <laughs> got his stuff off, uh, it was, uh, anyway. But uh, yeah, it's just better to wear gloves and, and a mask at the grocery store. And I, I kind of made fun of myself because the first time when we did the Facebook Live, when I looked back at the video, I, I touched my face. <laughs> it's so subconscious. Yeah. Um, so, and it, it, it happens. I've been a little bit better. I think I've only touched my face once so far to, during this one, but I'm definitely working on that. <laughs> okay, another question from Amber. Amber asks, do you know anything about drinking liquid iodine or iodine drops in water? You want to take that one, Dr. Rob? I mean, I know iodine is good for you. It's important. Um, I have not used it in, uh, in, in drops in water, uh, but it's important for uh, thyroid. It's uh, very important for uh, protection of the, the breast. Uh, it's one of those things that's been proven to, or have been shown in studies to protect the breast against breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, iodine is just very important, and we don't get enough of it, even, even here in, in a... Uh, a town like Naples, which is near the uh, near the ocean, but or near the uh, well, yeah, wa a body of water. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I haven't used it that way. I I recommend an iodine supplement um, for most people. Uh, Twelve point five milligrams a day is usually good for most people. There are some doctors who recommend higher doses of iodine. I think it's important to know that if you're going to take an iodine product. Uh, which we do need iodine. I agree with everything that Dr. Kurilovich just said, especially for our thyroid function. We don't get enough of it in our diet. You need iodine and iodide both. They do different things, and they, you really should have them with zinc and selenium. If you're not taking a source of zinc and selenium into your diet, um, that's the best way that they're utilized. So um, Lugol's iodine drops, I think, are, are still available if you just want to know how much you're using and... Um, but yes, it's a good supplement for sure. Yeah, 12 and a half milligrams is typically what I recommend. Okay, we have another question from Elizabeth. And she says, uh, Dr. Heather, I've just started using the Immune Boost Package. Hey. 
Yay! 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 Woo-hoo! Elizabeth. Are there any ingredients that have negative side effects on a mitral valve? Are there any contraindications? Excuse me, contraindications if you take other medicines. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, there's not contraindications to the things that are in the immune boost package with other medications, but that's an excellent question. And it's always good to ask when you do have a mitral valve, if you're concerned about something that could disrupt that or stick to it or something bad like that. But nothing in the package that, that you're using right now is contraindicated for your mitral valve condition. Okay, Dr. Rob, we have a question for, for you. Uh, this comes from Harriet, a person we all know and love. Uh, Harriet asks, uh, Dr. Karolovich, what do you think of the, uh, I always mess up this word, hydroxychloroquine with zinc as an early onset COVID-19 treatment or as a prophylactic. Wow. Harriet with the big words. All right. Hi, Harriet. Hope you're doing well. Um, Interesting because I, like most people, heard about it several weeks ago. And obviously I started getting phone calls the next day about prescribing it. Um, it was used in uh, China with apparently, or excuse me, in France with uh, some success. The big question was, uh, they were observational studies. They were not large randomized control studies, which is what we like to see in the United States. Um, it's been changing because a lot of the things that I've seen published recently from some smaller studies that have been done, some randomized controlled, are that it may not be as effective as uh, they thought it was. Uh, you know, there were some concerns because of long-term use, which we wouldn't see with, uh, with the treatment for this, and uh, about cardiac conditions, but I'm not sure if the cardiac conditions were more due to the uh, Zithromax that was used with it because there, there are some contraindications with people with arrhythmia issues or electrical issues, as we call them. Um, but I, it's one of those things where, you know, we're talking about boosting up your immune system so that you can help your body fight off things. But if I have someone that's acutely ill, um, would I use it? Probably if they're acutely ill and uh, they start having some respiratory issues, uh, yeah, I would probably use it until they tell me that uh, it's definitely contraindicated. Uh, why? Because there's still it's still very controversial, and I still think uh, we still need to hear more about it. But supposedly it... Uh, it will also help uh, stop the uh, replication of the virus. Uh, I know that with zinc, um, it might actually uh, help again. It'll help transport zinc into the, into the cell to stop the viral replication. But uh, my recommendation would be I would not use it prophylactically. I would just use it if um, I, got, I started having an acute infection that looked like it was uh, due to the coronavirus. Okay. Uh, speaking of zinc, uh, we're hearing a lot about zinc in the news as a treatment for coronavirus. Is zinc good to take? And if so, how much? And where can I get it? Yes, zinc is good to take. Um, again, I know I've mentioned this before, but you don't want to put zinc in the nose. Um, there used to be zinc gels that um, were used in the nose for travel, you know, to try to help keep anything coming in through the nose. But there were some reported cases of loss of smell by putting zinc actually in the mucous membranes of the nose. However, a zinc supplement like a, well, the zinc picolinate that I have here is a tablet. And these are, um, you've got, you can do lozenges or you can do tablets. And these are 20 milligram. Um, the recommended, from the research that I read, and I'll ask Dr. Krolovich this too, was anywhere between 50 and 100 milligrams of zinc in a day. So this bottle has 120 milligram tablets in it. And um, the lozenges work a little bit differently. They don't necessarily need to be milligram per milligram in a lozenge. But the lozenges um, have been known to help keep you uh, from, you know, specifically with viruses, they work on a couple of different mechanisms to help keep you from getting sick from a virus and help keep 
if you do have a viral infection, to make it much less long. So a zinc supplement is, a, is definitely a good idea. What do you think, Dr. Krolovich? What's the milligram on, on your supplement? These are these these um, tablets are oh, twenty milligrams 20 each, milligrams, okay. and so I'm recommending that they take three of them a day, which gets them at to sixty milligrams. Yeah, that's that's the dose I usually tell people. Uh, you know, if they have thirty milligram, I tell them to take it twice a day. Twenty milligrams would be three times a day. Uh, the recommended dose is at least sixty milligrams, uh, or or a little bit more. But um, and picolinate's the best absorbed out of all of them, so it's a very good product. Okay, we have uh, another question from Elizabeth. That's not Elizabeth, that's Elizabeth. Okay. And she, this is for Dr. Rob. She says, my father's company, Becton Dickinson, has been extremely involved in the testing for the COVID-19 virus. Do you have any thoughts on the accuracy of these tests? That's a great question. So, so we're talking about an antibody testing most likely um, they're starting to roll some out. I mean, there are several that have been fast-tracked through the FDA. Uh, I just actually started doing one in my office. And, um, you know, most of the specificity or, or how accurate are they are usually in the high 90s. Uh, sensitivity is usually about 90%. I think, you know, there. I think from what I understand, there were a lot of uh, products coming out of other places that were, had a lot of issues with them. So some of the the earlier testing may have not been so good, but I think the ones that um, we're getting now are probably pretty accurate. Um, you know, the only thing is, and I was having this discussion with Dr. Heather a little bit earlier, is that a lot of the tests are qualitative that basically just tell you if you've developed the antibodies, they, they don't give you the quantity. So we can't really tell you how immune you are, or how long the immunity will last. And that's those tests will probably come out at some point, but um, at least you'll know if you've been exposed or you haven't been and you, that you might have some immunity because people are also asking about being able to uh, donate their plasma in certain places. So um, I think if, they're, if they have some immune antibodies, they may be able to do that. But um, I, think, I think what we're seeing, at least, uh, and I think Quest is doing one now too, um, uh, is, it's probably a good test. That, that's my understanding as well, that um, we we don't, I'm not aware of us having a rapid test that's been FDA cleared or approved um, because of those issues of, when, when we say specificity um, and sensitivity, we're talking about if you had 100 people, up to 10 of them could have an inaccurate test and probably, you know, Either way that it's inaccurate is terrible, but if you think you're immune to something and you're really not, that's that's really really a bad situation. Um, so we don't want people to be in that. And the high 90s is is what we would expect a test to be. There's not most of the time you're not going to see a hundred percent sensitivity and specificity. That's un, unusual, but in the high 90s is where it, it should be. And those are not those are you have to send the the blood specimen to the lab. They're done pretty quickly, but. It's not a 10-minute test. Right. Those are still not quite yet here, and we're hoping for them. And we know that the technology is there, but we have to make sure that they're as sensitive and specific as possible. Okay, a lot of questions rolling in here. And if you're uh, watching this live broadcast, please jot your question in the comments, and we're going to get to as many of these as we possibly can. We've, we've gone a little over time here on what we were planning, but... Uh, but these doctors uh, can't wait to share all this information. There's so much misinformation out there, and uh, we're really excited that we were able to bring in uh, Dr. Rob today to help uh, demystify and debunk some of the um, the rumors and uh, just misinformation that you hear out there. So uh, Betsy has a question, and uh, I'm sorry. Let's get to Nina's question first. She's been waiting on this. Uh, Nana asks. Okay, crazy question. Should I stop all that I'm doing to protect myself and just try and get sick now and get over with this? And Amber responds, LOL, I actually, I actually have it. Uh, so what do you think about purposefully exposing yourself during this time? I, I can tell you, my, my, I, you are not alone in asking that. That's actually been a question that a lot of young, especially young and otherwise healthy people that feel they're not in the high risk group 
um, for this particular virus. But I would have to discourage you from doing that. We, this is, we still don't really know the numbers. We know how absolutely devastating I, this, this illness can be. And the idea that younger, healthy people aren't getting sick or aren't dying from it is actually not accurate. Um, there, there are reported, um, you know, a lot extended ICU stays or even deaths in people. It's not all people who are only in the high risk group. And, um, this is a, this is a virus that we, that we want to be able to have immunity to, but it's extremely unpredictable. It's extremely dangerous. And I would never encourage you, um, to expose yourself so that you could get through it and then have immunity because it's, it's, it's a very serious virus and it has capability of, 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 of ending life. What do you think, Dr. Rob? No, I agree a hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I was kind of bummed. I just did my uh, antibody test this week and it came back negative and I was kind of hoping I had been exposed somewhere, didn't feel sick at all. And, uh, now I could feel better about, uh, you know, going around town, but, um, I'm not going to run out and try to get exposed because you're right. Um, there's so much information that I see coming across, uh, you know, all the journals and so forth on every, on a weekly basis. And it's changing. I mean, it, it's interesting because I'll just give one example. I had heard initially, this was just probably about three, four weeks ago, uh, about certain medications making you more prone, uh, to developing, uh, that cytokine, uh, storm mm-hmm. or getting sicker. And, uh, now that they've done more research, they're actually saying the opposite. And so uh, it's constantly changing. So we're still trying to learn as much as we can about this virus. And uh, uh, yeah, so if you, if you go out there and purposely expose yourself, what if, uh, if you get really sick? Okay, uh, Amber wanted to make a clarification. This was my mistake. This is a pilot error on my end. Uh, OMG, she says, I don't have COVID. I have iodine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, Amber. I'm so glad you don't have COVID. And you do have iodine. Thank you for that clarification. My apologies, Amber. Thanks for the clarification. Uh, Stay safe. That's good to hear. Betsy has a question. I have heard high doses of IV vitamin C has been helpful at stopping the virus. What are your thoughts on IV supplements? Well, I'll jump in and then we'll ask because I get excited about IV supplements. I can tell you that when when I first... Um, I haven't always been um, knowledgeable about IV supplements. When you know, in in a traditional medical training program, we 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 see IV supplements in, with patients who are really sick in the hospital who can't take oral supplements and things like that. But as a practice of medicine, it wasn't really emphasized, or you know, it just wasn't part of the um, the whole program. And when I saw the IV, it, it just I I really was curious about why. Would giving something IV make such a difference? And um, IV nutrition is incredibly helpful because it's so bioavailable for you. What that means is your body can utilize it. When we take, there's so many things that we take through, you know, through our GI tract. We swallow and put in our stomach and in our digestive system. Whatever we take that way has to be absorbed into the body through mechanisms. And um, a good example of this is and acids and, and, and acid blockers and these things that a lot of people take, whether it's the Tums, whether it's, you know, a prescription medicine, that can change or literally wipe out the absorption of a lot of different nutrients by, by, by you know, how it changes the absorptive surface, the pH, and the, the ability of the gut bacteria that need to break things down to work. And a lot of us don't have the healthiest guts. Well, you know, the, the, we can go talk about leaky gut all day long, but taking something by mouth, you're, you're counting on the, all of that mechanism to be 100% working. And with vitamin C in particular, when you take the higher doses orally, it can really upset your stomach. And when your stomach is not working properly, you're not absorbing as much as really you'd like to absorb. And when we talk about high dose, there's actually different levels of high dose vitamin C. Um, you know, a decent dose of vitamin C in, a, in an IV is 4,000 milligrams. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big dose. It's a nice dose. 
when you get up into the 10,000, 20,000, even 50,000 milligrams of vitamin C, we're talking about a different category. Um, but there's a, been a, quite a bit of study. There's been a lot of published um, experience with IV vitamin C. I do want to say that there are some people who can't take vitamin C um, outside of their regular eating it in their food. They don't process it. They can't, they can't break it down. They've got a particular um, deficiency. And so we always ask, have you taken vitamin C before and it's been okay for you? Um, and it, it's, it's uncommon to run into that, but the G6PD, but, but it's out there. So most people do very well with vitamin C. What do you think, Dr. Rob? No, I agree. IV is the way to go. Um, if you, if you can, uh, I know that in, uh, China, they were getting significant improvement with very high doses of, um, IV vitamin C. Uh, a lot of the studies that have been done in the United States that kind of poo poo the vitamin C are very low doses IV, but that's a, acutely ill. I think from, a, a antioxidant preventative standpoint, uh, the, the lower doses, uh, such as you mentioned, are, are very good, and IV for all the reasons you stated. But th there's actually some studies out there that um, come across where it actually is good to combine, to mix. In other words, just because you're getting IV, uh, vitamin C, maybe you should still take your, your PO, and uh, it just has to do with uh, the way it's absorbed and the way uh, more, more of a chemical uh, change inside that uh, allows certain spikes of the antioxidant and the redox potential and all that uh, to work better for you. So I would still take the oral, even if I'm getting the IV. Dr. Heather, let's talk about your immune boost package a little bit because you have uh, IV vitamin C as mm -hmm. part of that. Uh, talk a little bit about that and who is this immune boost package for and how can they get it? Well, the immune boost package was something that um, that I put together uh, to give my patients a, a boost to keep their immunity higher than what it norm it would be at baseline, and it includes one IV, which you come into the office to have that done. That has um, the full Myers cocktail in it, but it also Myers cocktail is kind of a standard preparation for IV vitamin therapy. But we've doubled the concentration of the B vitamins, and we've, we've more than doubled the vitamin C content in the Immune Boost um, IV, and it's in a full liter of saline. And when you, when you come in to have the IV, we'll place the IV, we let it run in around 45 minutes to an hour for most people, and then you also get one injection while you're here of the thymus and alpha-1 in a large immune preventative dose. And that's that part that's in the office. And along with that immune boost, IV and thymus and alpha-1 injection, I have a, a, a group of supplements that were specifically picked from all medical grade companies to help you with your immune system. And it's 30 days worth in one bag. And that includes the daily two multivitamin that we were talking about before. This has a complete multivitamin and mineral content in it, and the, the B vitamins are methylated. So it's extremely bioavailable. MD Prescriptives is an amazing company. Um, they did uh, their formulating based off of that micronutrient testing that Dr. Rob had mentioned before, looking inside the cell. Also in the Mulus package is a bottle of vitamin C. So the vitamin C, it's 1,000 milligrams per tablet, and there's 100 of them in here. So you can take... 3,000 plus milligrams a day, and you've got 30 days worth in here. Uh, and this is medical grade. So you're, nothing that you have here has junk in it, or we don't know if it has 1,000 milligrams. It's been tested. Another part of the immune boost package is the biocidin throat spray that we were talking about earlier. The biocidin is it's, it's an herbal supplement, but it's antiviral, antibacterial, and it's even been studied in Lyme disease. It's a really amazing product, and this is a nice little throat spray. Then we have the zinc picolinate. I also have some zinc lozenges um, that I was finally able to get my hands up, but the zinc picolinate, these are 20 milligram tablets, and there's 100 of them in here. This comes in the immune boost package as well. Then we have the Argentin 23, the medical grade colloidal silver. This is the nasal spray. But you can use this spray to just spray the back of your throat if you don't tolerate it in your nose. Um, colloidal silver, incredibly effective. 
at keeping our balance, keeping the foreign invaders from taking over. Um, yep. Those are the products that are included in the Immune Boost package. That's a month's worth. If you wanted to do two or three months worth, we have packages available for that as well. And um, I ordered these things all special for these packages. They're all freshly arrived here. And um, that's you can go to drheather.net slash immune boost. That's where if you want to sign up for the for the package, you're welcome to. I cannot ship supplements. Um, I know I wish I could, but this one, the, the Daily 2 and the Colloidal Silver, you can buy off of my website through the portal to get to MD Prescriptives. But the rest of them, you'd have to stop in the office and pick up your supplement bags. Yeah, and just to clarify, the, the in-office treatments aren't happening right now during the sequestration period, but as soon as that opens up, then they'll be able to come in for that and pick up month two or month three of their supplements. Yes, and we're actually planning for that. You know, it's the end of April. We're, we are, May 1st, we're planning to be able to offer IVs unless we're told no. <laughs> yeah, and this is for your patients only, right? This is a patient it, only offer. It is. And if you are not my patient and want to become my patient specifically for for this, you're welcome to do that. Um, the, the reason I can't just have, I, I, need to, I need to be able to, you know, be able to take care of you the best way that I can. And doing IV therapy, you want to be, I want you to be my patient so I can make sure that everything is, is tuned up just like it needs to be for you. And we do have a way you can become a patient with a, with a very discounted um, new patient established way of doing it, extremely discounted. I'm really trying to get this out to as many people as want it and not, um, I, the, the, these supplements are significantly discounted almost to the wholesale value in this package. And I really do want anybody who wants their immune system boosted to be able to have this if they want it. Yeah, so the offer is over 50% off, and you're doing this just for a limited time only just during this coronavirus uh, pandemic. And uh, in case there was any confusion of that, the in-office stuff is going to be done uh, later as soon as possible. But the supplements packages, they can drive by and pick them up yep. right away. Literally, walk in the door, it's ready for you, pick it up and go and you get you get a pair of gloves <laughs> when you come in the office so we, we're we're putting a pair we've got whichever size you need so you get a, a clean pair of gloves when you come to pick up your your supplements package just so you can have an extra pair when you're out and about so that's drheather.net slash immune boost drheather.net slash immune boost okay a couple last final questions here um nana asks what do you think about switching to a keto diet during this time i i've heard that as well that uh, some people are recommending a keto diet what are your thoughts on that that's an excellent question i'm gonna let you go dr rob um short term it's probably not a bad thing long term i don't like keto diets but i think from a uh, short-term basis, uh, you're going to be reducing a lot of the things that probably increase inflammation in the body, which are processed carbohydrates. So uh, I think it's not a bad idea. Okay. Uh, Lisbeth uh, says you mentioned erythromycin. Azithromycin. Azithromycin. Okay. <laughs> uh, I get PVCs and wonder if any of the boost package ingredients aggravate the erythromycin. Aggravate the what? Uh, A R R Y T H M I A S. The the arrhythmias. Arrhythmias. My there's, apologies. That's okay. There's nothing in this immune boost package at the doses that I'm recommending that I would be what, causing any problems with your PVCs. Dr. Rob, do you see any, any no, there, issue? No, there's nothing harmful. The zithromycin or zithromax, uh, it, it just has to do with... Uh, that's an antibiotic. Yeah, that's an antibiotic, and that's something completely different. But n uh, none of these uh, supplements will cause any problems. Yeah, and she mentions no heart rhythms. I don't know if that's a question or a statement, but uh, she said no heart rhythms. That makes sense to anybody. I, uh, I, I think what she, what she may be referring to is is PVCs is a type of a um, preventricular pre, pre contractions is a type of arrhythmia that could be exacerbated with certain medications and certainly certain things. And um, 
it sounds like she wants to make sure that there's nothing in any of the ingredients in the immune boost package, including the IV, including the thymus and alpha, that could be an irritant um, to that arrhythmia, and there isn't. And she says not antibiotics. No, I think it's, she wasn't talking about azithromycin. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So I think we got it. <laughs> yes, she says a big exclamation point. Yes, my apologies, Elizabeth. Uh, I I just work here. I, I'm it's not whole new language. <laughs> I've got no letters behind my name. I just uh, <laughs> I just push the buttons. Uh, Maite Maite says saludos desde Argentina. Gracias. Como está ya? <laughs> Um, so isn't that cool? You know, worldwide audience, uh, you never know who's uh, going to be stopping in and listening. Um, let's see. Oh, so here's a, I think that's all of the, I believe we got into all the questions, uh, except there was one last question. This is kind of a trivia question, kind of a fun trivia question. Uh, and the question is, can you spell the name of the peptide you were just discussing? That would be Thymus and alpha peptide. Any doctors want to take a crack at uh, spelling yeah. your spelling so bee here? It's going to be T H Y M O S I N and then a separate word, alpha, A L P H A dash one. Ding, 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 ding. I don't have my <laughs> applause meter here, but uh, that is correct. I, she also, was actually asking me, asking like, you? how do you spell? Okay. <laughs> but I thought, hey, I you, wonder if they know how to spell this word, by the I way. I just touched my face again. I just realized it. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> if any of you are better than me, solid, you know, that's wonderful. Um, it's also known as TA-1, like capital T, capital A-1. You'll see it um, abbreviated that way too. Great. That's all the questions that we have. Any final thoughts, Dr. Rob, Dr. Heather? Can I go first? Yes, please. Just, uh, and you may want to mention it too, it's really about uh, D3. Very, very important uh, all the time, plus now. Uh, more important. Vitamin but, uh, D3. Vitamin D3, I'm sorry. Uh, and if you're going to take it, take it with K2, um, which just helps uh, the absorption and for, for the bone health. But uh, vitamin D3 is very, very important. It's actually a hormone and uh, melatonin. I think melatonin has been shown, at least in my studies, to reduce damage to the lungs, which is where the COVID virus likes to uh, do a lot of its damage. But it's a great antioxidant, great anti-inflammatory. Uh, dosage would depend on how much you can tolerate because um, a lot of people, even with low doses, uh, they just don't tolerate much melatonin. But those two are very, very important during this time. I totally agree with you. And um, on the D3, the daily two that we have, in it has 4,000 international units of D3 in, in two capsules, which is the dose. Um, so it's 4,000 units a day. It is combined in the appropriate um, proportion with vitamin K2 and vitamin A as well. Um, and that is those three need to be in the, the right proportion and present. And you can certainly take additional D on top of that. I totally agree with that. Um, vitamin D3 is, uh, it, it's really getting some traction in, um, it's particularly with COVID-19. We've been talking about vitamin D3 for other a long time, yeah, for a long time, for all lots of other functions in the body, but especially now. And, um, and I would just say, you know, hang in there everybody is, the, the tension is palpable with this disruption in lifestyle. For those of you that aren't working right now, my, my heart goes out to you. I'm sure that it's extremely stressful. We don't know when we're going to have a new normal and people can actually get back to some semblance of normal, but it's because we are out of routine, it's normal for things to be off for you. If you're finding you're having problems sleeping or you're irritable or something that's just off for you or even if you're starting to have some stomach problems being out of routine is 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 difficult but we're we're in this together we are going to get through it together we want your immune system to stay strong and um and thank you for joining us today and thank you dr rob this was awesome for you to be here oh, with thank us thank you thank you all right i'll see you guys next friday have a wonderful weekend keep that immune system strong